Okay, so good morning, everybody. Welcome to a special live webinar event uh, hosted by Patrick Zilbauer and the folks over in Infinity, and we appreciate the time uh, to do this. This is a little different than we normally do. Uh, most of our webinars have occurred after trading hours. We're going to make this one uh, during trading hours. And I am running uh, two separate uh, rooms and platforms here, so we got a lot of people uh, in our membership and, and as current guests as well as our webinar guests, so uh, very interesting for us today. Hopefully we'll have some uh, good trade opportunities to uh, uh, to get involved in. Um, today's um, topic here is making the jump from trading theory to live trading. Um, many of you obviously are in simulation mode, and simulation mode is good for learning a methodology, practicing, and so forth, but at some point in time uh, in your trading you know, career, you're going to have to make some sort of a jump. All right, and so the idea here is, um, you know, viewing the market action in a in a live environment. All right, um, and once you've done a lot of the practice and so forth, and now we make that jump into monitoring things on a live basis. Things are moving around quickly, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so that's what we're going to do here today. Uh, just a quick uh, disclaimer again, Polaris Trading Group. Uh, we offer services and products for an, on educational purposes only on a subscription basis. And again, as you all know, uh, NFA Compliance Rule 2-29, simply hypothetical performance results, uh, have an inherent limitations in trading and futures and options of speculative in nature, and past performance is not indicative of future results. All right, so uh, for those of you that do not know me, uh, again, I'm just, this is going to be just a quick intro, quick bio. Uh, I've been a trader for 30 years. Uh, I've worked at various investment banks. Uh, as a market maker capacity and, and a various other um, capacities as well. And I've worked at places such as the Shearson Lehman Brothers. Of course, they're no longer in existence uh, fo following the financial crisis. Um, United Bank of Switzerland, I was there, uh, ran the biotechnology healthcare group uh, trading uh, for many years and uh, various high frequency type trading funds. Uh, I was a market maker at these places. I've traded listed NASDAQ. I've traded futures, various derivatives. I've uh, been involved in uh, various parts of uh, portfolio risk management. And again, as a trader, we are managing risk on a daily basis. And you are effectively your own portfolio manager. And you should treat your funds certainly as such and manage them uh, in accordance uh, to your risk profiles. Um, the mission here at Polaris is uh, multi-pronged, but mainly um, one of my goals here is, is in the top one is to improve our decision-making skills. All right, uh, I know each and every one of you has the skills that know how to trade. You all know how to trade. You know the mechanics of trading and so forth. We want to go beyond the mechanics. I don't teach mechanics. Uh, I teach techniques. And the idea is um, I, I teach various uh, decision-making skills and, and concepts so we can improve our decision-making throughout the course of the day. Um, that, you know, we'll have winning trades, we'll have losing trades, and, and that's the way trading is, we all know. But each and every day we want to work on improving our decision-making skills, and that's one of our key objectives on a daily basis. Uh, along with that, segueing that we want to learn new empowering trading habits. We want to try to, you know, get away from those that have been limiting us from, from our success. And we know we can be successful, but we just have these self-limiting patterns that we just continue to fall into. So we're going to, you know, try to help you uh, work away from those and try to build new empowering ones. Uh, a lot of people are a little bit... Um, mystified by you know the market action they don't understand what the market's doing at times and um, they're just confused so what we're going to try to do there is, is you know demystify you know what's going on uh, with price action and then you know with that uh, we become more informed traders and I look at two groups out there I look at the groups that are informed and I look at the uninformed groups and uh, the informed group, the informed trader tends to be the one that, that is, uh, you know, uh, much more successful uh, at trading. And they seem to be that elusive 5% or so people that are constantly making money. Well, they're informed. They know what, what's going on. They know, um, you know, they, they know what they want to be doing. And, and everybody else is kind of 
following yesterday's action, trying to chasing price and so forth. So uh, I want to make, you know, one of my goals is to help e each of our members become a more informed trader. Okay, so those are the uh, core <coughs> uh, aspects of what uh, of what I do uh, for our mission. And just quickly, our, our daily trading operating procedures is, and I'm going to show you a couple segments of this, but we start with a daily trade strategy, and that simply outlines some key levels and trade scenarios, and we'll show you that in a minute. Each morning at 9.15 Eastern Time, okay, we, we begin our pre-morning briefing, and we, we speak with our members, and we start honing you know, what was re, uh, recorded in the daily trade strategy, all right, uh, review what happened in Globex and the upcoming cash opening and so forth. And as the day unfolds, and this is what we're going to be getting into, uh, we, we look at, you know, how the price is unfolding, look at various key uh, levels such as the initial balance, first hourly high low. We try to determine early if it's a trending day, a non-trending day, you know, how does it fit into the whole uh, schematic of, of what's happening, you know, on a larger basis. And then we drill down into our specific trade setups, all right? And hopefully we'll get a, um, a couple of those off for you today um, in, in good, uh, with good, some good action, all right? Um, and so we also utilize, well, we have an auto trade assistant. We've done a couple webinars in the past on that. Uh, we won't get too much into that. If we get to use it today, that'd be great. And then normally at the end of the day, I personally, you know, we, you know, I take a look at my own personal performance review, what I could have done better. And again, you know, I'm not critical on myself and you shouldn't be either, but what we should try to do is, is um, review and debrief in a sense uh, what happened during the day and how you responded to what uh, the market gave us for opportunities in a very constructive way. All right. Don't try to beat yourself up that you had bad trades or you didn't or you missed some trades. Um, but just, you know, be very constructive as your own effective trading coach. OK, so with that. Uh, what we're going to do is let me switch the screen. All right. And what I want to uh, quickly begin with each morning. All right. We begin. Everybody should see the uh, email here. All right. The daily trade strategy email. Now, everybody receives this in the morning uh, pre-opening. Uh, just type in yes if you do see it or not. I want to make sure we get the the screens up there. And I, I go through a short review and then I simply, okay, thank you. I go through a short review and I highlight uh, what's called PTG trading section. And this is where I write uh, every morning uh, freehand uh, what the market kind of did for us yesterday, a little short review, and then what I'm expecting uh, for it to do for us today. All right. So today uh, we, we work on something called the three-day cycle. And again, I, I've gone through an entire webinar on that. Um, so, but, but today kind of the market goes through cycles, ups and downs. And so, uh, this kind of the three day cycle, uh, uh, strategy kind of gives us a template of what we're, uh, what we're looking to do. Okay. And with that, okay, we have a chart that we look at with our daily trade strategy and we outline uh, key levels, all right? So again, this is all part of our pre-morning briefing, and I'm not gonna go into too de much detail here, uh, but we go into quite a bit of detail with our pre-morning brief for our members. And today, the expectation was um, either a hold of the 2058 level on a pullback, having reached uh, prior three-day cycle targets yesterday, and then tested that in the overnight, as you can see here at, at this particular level. So the so what we wrote this morning was on our pre-morning strategy was uh, should the market pull back, we were looking for 58s to be uh, potentially key support level. Uh, if that did not hold, which as you'll see, currently it is not holding or has not held, uh, prices should come back, pull back down to the 52s to the 55 area. And that's, I believe, where we're currently sitting at right around 54 for hopefully a renewed buy response for those that are uh, more uh, bullish. Um, but we, we don't take, you know, we, don't, we don't have an individual bias one way or the other. We're just simply, we want to go with what the market um, is going to give us. We identify key levels and then we um, live, uh, you know, read the market's action and then we uh, take our cues from that. So this is, this is how we begin our uh, uh, briefing and we do a few more other things, but 
Uh, this is the core of it. All right, and let me just uh, close this window. We'll close this window. All right, and the next level that we uh, discuss, okay, is a 60-minute chart, okay, with uh, profiles, as you can see here on the right-hand side, along, again, with these key levels that we've spoken about. So uh, 51.75 to the 55s is a central pivot zone for us, and then there's a three-day central pivot embedded in there around the 54s. So the goal was, uh, should, if, since the market did not exceed the prior session's high and has violated the 2058-60 uh, level, okay, uh, market it was expected to pull back down. Now what we're looking for is the market to respond in here uh, with some buyers. Okay, so the, so the direction of the market's action currently is down, but into a zone where there's an expectation for uh, a bit of a buy response. Okay, they're kind of bringing you up to speed to where we currently are now. All right. Uh, on the flip side, we're looking for the 60s. Should the market auction back up to that level? All right, to offer some resistance. Now we're uh, again we're a distance away from that. Um, the next level is going to be 58s for resistance. So 58s initially, since we've broken down through that level, becomes uh, potential support becomes resistance. 58s, then 60s on the way back up. Um, on the flip side to where we currently are now, 52s to the 54 zone, uh, we should start ex experience, price should ex start experiencing some sort of a buy response uh, coming back into the marketplace. Uh, if this gives up, right, if the buy response uh, is not persistent enough to shift the, the dynamics back up, Okay, we could entire we you know there's a potential to give the entire you know uh, move up uh, back. All right, so there's always a threat of that. All right, so that's where we are on the bigger picture. And then the last thing we do for honing, all right, before we get to our execution charts, is we drill down into our five minute chart. Now there's a lot of levels and text and labels on a particular chart like this. Um, there's a lot going on, but uh, we teach our members how to read each and each one of these levels, so it really not, doesn't become a daunting task. As a matter of fact, it's it's, it's actually fairly clean for the for those of you that like, um, you know, your uh, market profile or volume profile aficionados. Uh, we have a lot of that information um, detailed on our our five minute what we call our balance chart. Okay, it's a five-minute chart and it has a lot of uh, point of control histories, et cetera, et cetera, uh, standard deviation levels, uh, and so forth. And again, all these are cleanly, hopefully cleanly labeled for everybody. Um, makes things a lot easier. We know where uh, the initial balance low, midpoints, prior highs, prior lows, effectively all the key information uh, that we need to know, all right, uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. So we... Um, so most of you have multiple monitors, and it's difficult for me to show everything in, in one particular uh, uh, monitor. So we'll bring in those as necessary. And then what we do here, this is our uh, main execution chart that we look at uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. And again, we'll bring this into view now, and then we'll just start getting into the current live action with, with everybody. All right. So. Uh, Having the pre-briefing uh, out of the way, having some uh, levels that we're interested in uh, playing off of, okay, and, ex and the expectation of a buy response coming in between these 52s, 54 zones. So what we'll do is I'll do something like this, all right, and I'll just highlight that this is the expectations. We'll uh, have a buy response come here. You can clearly see that since the opening, <clears throat> uh, the market has been in a down, uh, downward trajectory. All right, on the S&P. On the left-hand side here, uh, we do trade, trade, uh, trade crude oil. I don't know if how many of you of our webinar guests uh, trade crude oil. All right, this is what you'll see. Now, of course, we didn't execute this, uh, but this is what you'll see for setups. All right, um, you'll see uh, this is what we would uh, call a, a discount, uh, a long discount. So it'll give us... Uh, uh, the position size, uh, stop point, risk-free, and then automatic target. So this one 
uh, is a valid setup. Again, I did not execute this since we began our uh, webinar. Uh, but we'll be looking to play the long side on uh, crude oil for the time being. So what I do here is I'll just kind of keep a small window over to the side and then we'll uh, zoom it into view um, when we uh, when we have something worthwhile to work with. All right. Uh, the middle chart here is a 750 tick uh, chart. Some people use range charts. Uh, we use primarily uh, tick charts for our executions. Uh, we look at market profile in the overnight. Yes, as a matter of fact, let me just bring that in. Um, okay, uh, this is a, and, and many of you that have a Sierra chart probably are familiar with this type of chart anyways. All right, this is one that um, uh, Sierra chart, uh, Patrick and the folks over at Infinity, I believe, have created auto automatically for us. And I really like this one. This splits the profile into the day and in the evening sessions. All right, so we have an idea of what happened uh, prior uh, regular trading hours okay is everybody lost audio how's the audio for everybody audio good okay lost sound okay is the sound back for again we're our webinar folks have lost sound sound back One, two, three, four. Okay, can't hear anything. All right. Okay, no sound. All right, guys, we lost our sound. That's not good. The go to folks lost all audio. Hmm. Okay. Audio is off. Okay. How do I correct that, Patrick? Let's see. All right, let's just uh, pause this. Okay, yeah, in our room we can hear, but the folks over in the uh, go to meeting. All right, let's just pause the recording. All right, sorry about that, everybody. Looks like uh, we had a little um, internet glitch with uh, uh, go to go to meeting here. So we should have everything back uh, online for us. Okay, and again, just uh, say uh, raise your hand if everything looks good. Okay, so again, uh, somebody was asking me just uh, prior about the uh, market profile uh, in the overnight. Uh, action and what I was saying here was uh, that we look at the uh, split profile that's offered to us through uh, the Sierra chart and infinity and I really like this particular um, platform okay um, some of you still don't have sound they say I'm not quite sure okay uh, can, you hear David? I can, hear can everybody hear me okay All right, thank. Okay, guys. All right, all right. So let's just continue on so we can get into some uh, some live trades. Thank you very much. All right. So again, uh, we look at the uh, overnight profiles uh, to give us perspective of of how the market uh, auctioned in the in the Globex session, and that gives us some uh, indication here of uh, of how the market uh, may open up in the cast session. All right. So again, as you can see here in the profile. Uh, they tested the over, uh, prior high by a couple ticks, failed to uh, hold above that. And then, as you can see, during the uh, overnight into the cash session, prices sold off. And then as the cash session opened here, all right, at the 59 halves, a uh, quick auction up and a reversal back down. So uh, this sets uh, this in motion here for today that uh, at least early on that there's... Um, no support for these upper prices above these 5860s, right? As you can see in here, and then the next key level, as we mentioned, is again down at between these 52s and 54s. So we can take a lot of that action uh, off of the uh, profiles from yesterday, okay? Where the uh, low volume nodes occurred yesterday, and then here we are today. So again, uh, to answer that question, that gentleman's question about 
uh, do we look at the, the overnight profiles? All right, so that's uh, the chart that we use for that. All right, so let's just get back into um, the live trading event. All right, so where we are and see if we can uh, grab some, uh, some good trades here today. All right, so once we have all that in mind, now we simply drill down into our execution charts <clears throat> all right, and what you'll see in the variety of here, you'll see some uh, several lines, but um, we use a lot with the average true range um, configurations uh, in price. So you'll see ATR lines here, this yellow, magenta, and red lines. These are what we call our structure lines. So everything it currently is structured to the downside. All right, now for the bullish case, price is going to need to. Uh, get back above the 58 uh, handle here. Okay, so what we do here is we uh, frame out uh, the marketplace, all right, price action between key resistance, all right, so we actively do this throughout the session, and um, and then down here uh, for potential key support. So the, the overall action uh, bias right now today is to the downside, and what we're looking to do is looking to make some uh, short sells as close as we can up near the uh, structure point and then for a rotation back down as prices auction down here into the lows into this potential support zone all right we come off the sell side in other words we don't want to be shorting down into a potential support zone um, unless they convert this unless sellers uh, break this through and then cannot get back up through it and then we'll uh, consider that all right uh, you'll see here um, the uh, order flow uh, we use this as a uh, helpful conf confirming fact of what's happening uh, live uh, any type of chart whether it's range tick time can only give you so much information all right uh, what we're looking for here is the live order flow all right as it's unfolding to confirm uh, a level of support or resistance and what's happening you know in the in the underlying uh, dynamic of order flow all right after that all right uh three-day cycle how do we see the start of the three-day cycle uh you can go on the website first off um and uh read about the three-day cycle we have a we did an entire workshop on that particular uh topic and we have a worksheet that helps gives us all the various um, uh, levels and targets, all right? And the three-day cycle um, is an ongoing cycle. Uh, the start of it uh, was back in 2008, and <clears throat> so it's just an ongoing cycle. All right, currently, we're on cycle day three, and, and again, many times on this particular day, having reached cycle targets, already all right so let me just show you uh, this particular chart all right this is a cycle uh, cycle chart and and again these are all uh, automatically drawn for us these particular lines and having up here having hit cycle targets all right up at this zone near the uh, 65s okay on cycle day three now this sets in motion uh, potentially a pullback here in price all right, the dynamic yesterday was bullish. Now we're getting a pullback to absorb some of that buying. Now, again, what needs to happen here today on the bullish side is the, the buyers need to come in strong enough to absorb any current selling, all right, and, and then move higher, okay? Uh, yes, uh, the three-day cycle has been done uh, work on a variety of uh, instruments, okay? Um, and we have uh, information on that. We have spreadsheets that will uh, identify key levels for that as well, okay? Again, a lot of that information is available on the website, all right? And you can take a look at that uh, at your leisure. All right, so again, down at this level here, we're looking for a buy response. So uh, we have a couple different ways of how we look to trade. One, we look to trade primary with the trend direction, okay? We're not counter trend traders. We don't want to, like for instance, yesterday with the market was strong as it, as it was, uh, we stayed primarily on the buy side, looking to try to buy 
any type of pullback we possibly could uh, with some valid signals. Uh, we did not short anything yesterday and uh, primarily we want to stay on the uh, correct side of the market with the correct market bias. Now today uh, we have some backing and filling occurring so now we have the ability you know the price is bouncing backing up backing up uh, from key levels hit some support and resistance levels so this is the type of day where we can trade a little bit more uh, freely on both sides uh, of the ledger all right longs and shorts so right here what we'd be looking to do is again 53s to the 54 zone uh, looking to take nibbles on the long side and back up here near these 57 58s on the short side all right so that's kind of brings us uh, up to date and what we want to do is we, we look at our order flow to analyze you know if, if I want to buy something on a, on a spec long down here at the 53s okay I want to see that the order flow is supporting that idea okay again we you know the idea is is to be with the primary action but you know you can get bounces back and forth very easily so on a day like today what we're looking to do is is take a couple handles out of every trade a couple two to three handles and then if we give a uh, a big you know stronger move we'll try to get you know five six sevens and so forth uh, we're not scalpers okay we're not scalpers uh, we don't try to scalp for three or four ticks. Uh, if you're a one, two, three contract trader, it's very, very difficult to, uh, uh, you know, to trade for four or five ticks. Uh, if, if you're upwards to, you know, 10 lots, 20 lots, et cetera, uh, then it makes a little bit more, perhaps, uh, uh, rationale to, to trade for, you know, uh, tighter. But what we want to do, since, you know, majority of our membership are anywhere from uh, single lots to, to three to five, uh, lot traders we're looking for two points three points something that will um, from a reward risk standpoint uh, make you know a lot more legitimate sense uh, initial stops now again stops are personal right for the most part uh, what I use as a guideline for all our um, trades is a three point stop so that's a 12 tick uh, maximum allowable risk stop per contract all right and it's simply what that is that adjusts for you know uh, levels of volatility okay so again if we're looking to buy in this zone here all right so what we'll try to do is we'll try to pick something up around this low zone and then we have you know we'll have a, a, a three-point stop somewhere below all right but generally we're not going to hold it for a three-point stop against us all right. No, uh, it's. Not, I don't think it's in information overload. As a matter of fact, it's actually um, uh, once we, at least our members don't believe it's an information overload. Once we have uh, the chart set up the way we want it, we focus primarily on uh, order flow here. This is not much in the way of overload when you're looking at order flow. All right. <coughs> All right, so again, we're looking to you know, buy off of these 53s, 54s for a rotation of 56, 57, 8s. And we get up to the 8s, that will be our uh, level to uh, either exit longs if you're in or perhaps initiate some shorts uh, if we get up there and we see some failures. Okay, so that's where we currently are. All right. Now here in the order flow, I don't know if anybody's that familiar with the order flow, but we have it set up where we have uh, dominant side uh, buying and selling. This is this heavily green and heavily red. So as down here into the 53s, buyers stepped in. Okay, as you can see here, um, heavy green, larger numbers. So the buyers stepped in more aggressively. Uh, shifted the price action to the up column and and then has subsequently uh, pushed it higher so this is what we're looking for when we're looking to uh, buy an area okay now the oscillator that we use down here we can see that it's in the discount territory at the time and we're expecting support to come in so then this supports the idea 
all right, of when the order flow starts shifting to a more bullish, okay, we want to look to buy that. Okay, and again, so right now, all right, we'll just uh, scan. We're pretty much up to date, and we'll scan for uh, our next trade opportunity here. Again, we'll be looking for around the 54s on any shallow pullback here, see if we can get another uh, opportunity to buy some of this stuff. All right. Now, again, we don't scalp trade. There's not a, a moment every single day. There's a lot of watching. And, and again, to be, I think, quality trading requires uh, an examination of what's going on throughout the session. We use a technique uh, we refer to as the ODA loop, O-O-D-A, stands for Observation, Orientation, Decision, Action. And again, a lot of good trading uh, is, a is a result of uh, scanning the market, looking for opportunities that meet our criteria. And we have to have specific criteria. Uh, we don't just go in there, you know, back and forth uh, throughout the day. For some people, it's uh, very slow trading. All right, some people that are more um, that want more action. Uh, they may find that this is a uh, you know kind of a slower um, room for them. Uh, but again, we're looking for quality uh, structural setups that will um, you know provide us an opportunity to move um, you know two to three points at a time. Okay. Now we're not adverse to taking you know smaller uh, profits, you know six tick, seven tick type. Profits. We're not adverse to doing that if the market's not offering us any uh, further opportunity. But our, again, what we do is we seek uh, the better, cleaner uh, trade opportunities uh, based upon our criteria. And again, all our criteria is we don't we don't discuss it throughout the day in our membership. It's all part of our membership materials and education, so our members get an opportunity to to study all the all the criteria that we look for. Okay. And then as the day unfolds, all right, again, you know, some, some members are scalpers. Uh, primarily, we're not scalpers, but uh, again, we're, every trade, I think, effectively begins as a, some sort of a scalp. All right, we, you know, we initiate a trade, and, but we want to see uh, evidence that supports, you know, the idea or the inference that we're making about where price may go next. All right. And and again, don't be a. Sure, go ahead, Patrick. I just wanted to make a comment about from a traditional risk management standpoint that I'm sitting, and it's a little bit different than what David's sitting, and a little bit different than where you guys are sitting. That sometimes when when David Patrick before when he mentions the 12 or the three point stop or the 12 tick stop, it kind of throws some people for a loop because a lot of people go through these you know various trading education programs or read about you know get all these like back tested and hypothetical performance and other people in the education business and so on and they're you know they hear oh i can use you know three tick stop four tick stop five tick stop and at least once a week and this is no joke i have a conversation with a customer of mine who is predisposed towards this you know this concept of instant gratification which has brought him to day trading in the first place and you take a customer like that and you put them in front of a platform that allows them to get in or out of the market in you know less than a second you give them a high lever account and a lot of volatility what do you think is going to happen with that person so when i mentioned earlier when i was giving a little intro about david's temperament i know you can hear it in the way he conducts his presentation it's just how the room sounds so it, very, it does sound slow to some people but this is what i believe my customers need and uh, I just wanted to really make sure that that you know that that point that came at home because I'd rather see a customer of mine take a couple of three point stops a week on one or two trades and be done with the day rather than take four or five trades you know with a four tick stop and be gone and close at one o'clock. So I just wanted I think that's an important comment that I wanted to make. I want to make sure that 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 point came across. Go ahead. Okay, uh, is this? A recording or a live real time? No, this is uh, live real time and it's being recorded. Okay, so thank you, Patrick. Yes, um, again, uh, I don't think anybody, you know, you've seen some uh, 
person, TV personalities that uh, you know jump all over the place, okay, and uh, and they scream, and there there are other educators out there that you visit their rooms, and you know again, you know you'll you'll get that high paced, uh, you know I'm buying them here, I'm buying them here, I'm selling them here, and before you know what they're doing, they're already out of the trade, and you're wondering where they got in. Okay, uh, that's not really an environment where you're going to learn and, and prosper in. All right. Again, trading is fast. Trading can be very fast with these high frequency, uh, you know, type algorithms that are out there. Uh, what I'm trying to do is always try to prepare our members in advance. All right. What levels I'm interested in taking a trade? What we as a group should be focusing on? Uh, on which side to trade? Okay. And again, by doing that, it helps prepare you in advance because when it comes down to the time to take a trade, okay, you have to be prepared for that event. It's going to be hard enough for you to take the trade. Many, you know, and again, that's when the rubber meets the road. All right, it's going to be very hard for you to take that that trade at the time, but uh, it does not help you to be emotionally charged in such a way where. Um, you know, you're, you're basically frantic uh, about taking a trade. What should I do? Where's my stop will be? You know, where's my target, etc. We try to, um, you know, cover all that material in, in what we do, you know, in our classes. And then when it comes to game day, which is daily, all right, and we have our um, game plan prepared, all right, then we're ready for, for action. Okay, so again, we try to keep a, a, a relatively calm uh, demeanor. All right. Yeah, again, you know, some of your charts may not be in 100% alignment with Mayan. Uh, again, keep in mind, um, the, the, you know, the charts throughout the day are for reference only. And uh, again, you should not be trading off of my particular charts itself. Um, again, that's why we, we offer our... Uh, indicators and charts for uh, all our members so they can have it on their desktop uh, but they should be very very relatively close all right so again as you can see here uh, we were highlighting the opportunity to take longs around the 5354 area all right and and again you know using the order flow can help uh, help establish those positions uh, I just typed into our, our trading room that if anybody's long to look to scale around the 58s, and that's what we blocked out for our um, for our resistance area or our supply area uh, at this point. So again, all of this stuff is in advance, all right? We try to highlight and make sure that everybody is on the same page, all right? And then it's certainly everybody's um, uh, responsibility to take their own trades, of course. And again, we're going to try to get a couple in here ourselves now. All right. Uh, is it too late to jump? Uh, is it too late to see a jump in order flow? Uh, at this point, uh, what we would be looking to try to do here is to buy a pullback somewhere in the neighborhood of around the, you know, where the buyers stepped in earlier. All right. Around this uh, 55, 50, 56 area. Okay. In here. This is where we're looking. Now, again, up here at 58, price has already achieved that level. We saw some sellers come back in right at that level. Price has shifted the column, okay, with additional selling. So now we don't want to be buying them up at those levels. We have pretty much of a range action unfolding, as you can see here in our chart pattern. And, and the way the volume distribution uh, is, all right, if this is this right there in this section of, of our price. Uh, this is more of a normal uh, neutral type uh, distribution pattern. So again, we're going to be look to try to buy something on a pullback here somewhere around the 55, 56s. See if we can get a rotation back up. Uh, but would not be surprised to see it rotate, you know, all the way back down. All right. How do we handle or identify consolidation? Okay, terrific. Um, all right, uh, a lot of times what we want to try to do is uh, identify with the volume profile as I've uh, just highlighted here. Okay, what, uh, 
is, is it a more consolidative uh, type pattern? All right, right now we have uh, a consolidative uh, pattern here. We get a high volume node at the 56s and it's low edge uh, at the 58.59, low edge at the 53.54. So this effectively price has found a range balance zone to work under. All right, so right now uh, we're, we're going to treat this as a range trade, okay, uh, looking to buy the lower edges here until they fail, uh, taking profits as we go up or shorting, looking for uh, shorting opportunities at the upper edge, all right, until uh, that clears out. Now, keep in mind when we do do this, uh, you may have end up having a stop out if the market punches through the upper edge or lower edges, all right, again, that's just part of it. What time frame is the chart? Uh, this is a 750 tick chart in the middle, and this is a six tick reversal type chart uh, on the footprint chart. All right, um, Sierra chart has a lot of different styles. You can do range, you can do time. Uh, I do a six tick reversal, very similar to a point and figure chart. All right, uh, we also use other larger charts. Um, the 750 tick is just a, uh, a more sensitive chart for us for signals. Uh, we can use a 1500 tick chart. Some folks use uh, range, like a uh, I think a 12 range or something a little bit larger. Okay, on the left hand side here on crude oil, okay, this is a 250 tick chart. All right, and again we lose we use larger uh, we use larger sig uh, charts for the bigger picture as well. All right. Uh, I'm looking. I'm looking around the 56s. All right for uh, nibble on the long side. So again, we just got a question over in our membership about are we looking at uh, 58s for longs? Okay. And again, right now, not for longs until we clear it. So if we clear and convert the 58s. So what that means, everybody. You know, again, in terms of our terminology, if we get a price that if we clear out 58s, right, and then we come back and hold 58s, then we'll be the market will give us enough evidence to shift bias to the long side. All right. Okay. Uh, I'm going to stay to the long side right now. All right. At at the moment. And again, trying to get around these 56s on a pushback. All right. Uh, the cells that uh, anybody made cells at 58 were long cells for many lower purchases. We have not shorted 58s at this point. Okay, we have not shorted 58s. I want to see this clear out, and we'll be looking to buy this now. All right. So what you can do is, you know, again, I don't necessarily advocate limit orders. All right. Um, I usually the type order flow or type order that we use either market order or a buy or sell stop for entries. All right, I'm not a big fan of limit orders uh, to enter. All right, so we're going to try to, uh, I mean, I'll put a little reference here. All right, and again, this is uh, just a reference here at 5675. All right, I have a limit there to buy, but I don't typically like to use limit orders for entry. All right. Yeah, daily loss limits and profits, um, again, that becomes personal. All right, again, um, I, I highly recommend, as, as I know that Infinity offers um, a uh, management feature with their platform. Uh, to manage um, uh, daily loss limits, I think you should take advantage of that. You should predetermine what your um, loss limit uh, is going to be based upon your personal uh, uh, preferences. All right. So now, look, we're clearing out these 58s here now, right? So now this offers us something to begin to work with. So now they're expanding uh, this lower range. All right. They're expanding this lower range. Uh, each of our particular trade setups that we look for in terms of um, we usually commit about $200 uh, per trade position size. All right, so now the market is moving higher. 
And again, now we're willing to uh, you know buy something here uh, at 58 on a pullback. Okay. All right, so again, since we cleared out the 58s, prices has cleared out the 58s. Uh, why don't I like limit orders? Limit orders, uh, you know the concept about a clay pigeon? All right, uh, I don't want to just leave an order out there and all of a sudden a high frequency buy or sell program comes in and blasts through uh, a level or uh, some geopolitical event that occurs and you know you don't have a stop order so if, you, if you're going to put a limit in there right make sure you put a you know an, a, an appropriate sell stop okay you know in uh, in place okay and even then it won't guarantee you um, you know if a big event occurs out there in the world all right it's not going to guarantee uh, you getting stopped out so what I like to do primarily is um, again I just have these orders up there currently for reference all right <clears throat> but what I like to do is when price reaches a level I prefer to look actively at the order flow and if I like what I see in terms of if I'm looking to buy if I like to, if I'm seeing those buyers come in then it's very easy for me to just to go click market order just pay the offering price all right get in on that offering price okay um, a lot of times, you know, prices will push up and then they'll, you know, jam right back down. So again, the essence of using a limit order is I don't want to be, you know, out there like a clay pigeon, All right? So I, I want to be active with what I do. I know my criteria, what I'm looking for. I know the level that we're looking to, uh, you know, get involved in, All right? And I usually mark it off here on our order flow with some arrows and so forth. And then when it gets there, then you then it's up to you that you know we all need to then pull the trigger, all right. Uh, a lot of times, if you're looking to buy a breakout of a, of a level or a formation, uh, you can use a buy or a sell stop. That's very effective, all right. Um, our um, our um, auto trade assistant tool that we have, all right, for our setups. Um, they use the uh, buy and sell stops uh, as a key uh, entry technique. All right. So we're back to uh, so we're back to the uh, 5950s. Okay. Yeah. Again, I don't have an order there, uh, Herman. All right. I was just highlighting it for 58s. Again, I was just explaining where I did. I don't really want to leave an order out there on the book. All right, a limit order, but I, uh, we are interested in trying to buy a pullback here into this 58 area, okay? All right, so again, you know, a little pullback here into the 58, and that's where we'll be looking to buy it, all right, to try to uh, get a move back up. Now, the opening range average midpoint, the, the midpoint of the first five-minute bar of the day is at 60.50 there. That's that ORRMP. Again, all this, all right, all this will, uh, these uh, notations, these labeling on the right-hand side gives us uh, exactly, you know, I know where the Globex opening was, I know where our five-minute, I know where the day session opening is, etc. Yes, I do not have an order on the book at 58 currently, simply because I don't want to leave limit orders out there, but we are interested in... Um, uh, taking a long somewhere around that 58 okay now if you feel comfortable with limit orders um, you know by all means you can use them for yourself as long as you feel comfortable with that uh, I prefer to use limit orders for exiting trades not for entering trades okay uh, it doesn't really matter you know a tick or two everybody wants to use you know a limit order for entry uh, what really doesn't really matter is is that extra tick that you think you're going to save. You know, many times prices will trade to your limit, not uh, give you an execution and then move away. And then, you know, it's the old proverbial, you know, D for a T. 
all right that geez I should have I wish I bought them there and it, it moved away well that extra tick that you were trying to you know uh, gather doesn't really help you know you end up missing trades if you want in a ticks not going to make a difference or maybe even two doesn't really make a difference but if you want in you know uh, get in and this, this also allows you to evaluate the order flow okay so again we uh, we stalled out here right now in the opening price at 59.50 alright again I'm still interested in, in this lower part of the column around the 58s 57 50 58s also what I like to see on our on our oscillator here alright I like to see the oscillator down in the discount territory alright this allows us to um, and get it in a, in a more structural uh, type location all right and again you get an, an opportunity to evaluate you can see the order flow up here at 5950 okay sellers all right filled in those buyers there and then it shifted the columns okay so now all right I want to look to you know as the sellers are coming down here we'll look to this lower level all right, on this pullback here into around these 56, 7, 8 area all right, for a long. <clears throat> and in the top right hand corner we use the advanced decline line numbers and the tick value numbers all right to uh, uh, to help us gauge uh, the uh, intensity of the buying and selling okay so again the buyers get filled up there uh, that pushed it up now we're getting just a rotation back down Okay, and now we look at our order flow and again we'll look just uh, looking to uh, see if that stalls out now in order to buy what we're looking for is we're looking for the order flow on the sell side okay on the sell side to uh, dissipate okay we're looking for the order on the sell side to dissipate Uh, the oscillator that we have is a proprietary uh, oscillator. We use a derivative of the uh, CCI, Commodity Channel Index, but it is a uh, proprietary configuration. Uh, it, was, it is based upon the original uh, CCI, um, but it is our own proprietary uh, figures. And again, this is how we measure our premium and discount uh, type uh, setups. All right, so let's just scoot, zoom out here a little bit so we can get perspective alright we're underneath the opening range we're underneath the opening price so that so the day bias right now alright the day bias is is uh, bearish alright why is that because price is still trading below the opening uh, price points alright so the day bias is bearish uh, the pullback into potential support zone has occurred all right now we're looking for let's just get rid of this all right now we're looking for uh, a continued buy interest here on any subsequent pullbacks that we're currently experiencing right now all right so we're looking at this level and again uh, we don't have any buy indications right here in our order flow so what I've said earlier is although we're looking to buy around the 58s all right I, I got to make sure that we have some signals here all right now what you can do is is once the selling dissipates and the buyers are starting to pay the offering more aggressively all right then you can go in and nibble say all right I'm gonna buy one and then if it starts uh, working in your favor then I'll buy another one okay you can start building your position all right but at least we're back in an, an area of interest where the buyers stepped in before all right, and that's what we'll be looking to do here as well. So as it's coming down, if I continue to see, 
this is again this is real time evaluation if I continue to see aggressive selling on the bid side okay I need to see that price getting absorbed by the buyers but if the sellers are still much more aggressive all right then you know it, it doesn't help me to buy into weakness I want to buy into when the selling is complete So see the see how the selling is a little continues to be a little bit more aggressive here a lot of the reds all right so this is not enough evidence for me to just jump right in even though we were interested in this level all right again it's hard to buy into this aggressive selling all right so then we'll say okay if they don't hold here the next level here will be about 56 of interest all right see how they keep selling here on the bid this is where Though we want to buy, I don't want to be buying it into aggressive selling. All right. Uh, the one on the right here is the, it's called the six tick reversal number bars. Okay. Uh, number bars, that's what the, again, we can expand it out here. That's what um, Sierra Chart uses as the term number bars, but I call it a, it's a six tick reversal. So again, every column goes up and back down uh, uh, at, from the higher low six ticks and then it shifts the column okay how do I identify a pullback uh, from a reversal okay um, a pullback will normally have a uh, so for instance this series of higher highs and higher lows here all right a pullback should hold a prior low okay if price ends up violating a prior pivot low okay uh, the development then could be more of a deeper reversal unfolding okay you don't know it's a reversal just because it it reversed the column all right a structural reversal has to take out prior structure lows in other words pivot lows or pivot highs all right. Otherwise, it, it's just classified as a pullback, you know, within a within a developing up move or developing down move. All right. Again, that a lot of that is basic technical stuff that you can um, <clears throat> that you can find in, in in you know any technical analysis books. But primarily, uh, now we're, we're looking for this 5650 here to hold. All right. So what we can do. All right. And this is where the prior lows were. This is where the, the bar shifted. All right, so we had buyers come in. Okay. All right, so now right in here, now we didn't buy 58, so that's fine. All right, we see a little bit more two-sided trade. So we can get involved in here, take a look at ticks. Now what I like to see here on, the, on our volume oscillator all right, our CCI oscillator is now we're in the discount territory. Okay, so this allows us to begin to look for a uh, an entry point. All right, and we're around our structure point, so we're back around the midpoint of this range. Now the risk is going to be this. All right, if we were to buy this here, all right, aggressively, and the buyers don't step back up. All right, these sellers, you know, can can blast the price right back down. Remember, we're in a range type condition now. All right, so we can be a little bit more patient. All right, to try to buy as close as we can to a to a structure point, and that's going to be right now here around these 56s. See how the buyers are starting to step in here at 57s, and below 57s, there hasn't been any real selling on the order flow. Does everybody kind of see that? All right. This is what I'm looking at right now. It's fairly balanced right now, 2,2600, 2, 
not much in the way of, of selling below that. All right. Are these charts bigger at your live trading site? Yes, you can increase the size. All right. If you have bigger screens, you can increase the size. All right. Uh, I'm working off of a 27 inch monitor right here, but in, in the webinar, it may not appear that big. All right, but we got a 27 inch monitor and in through the platform that we use, uh, we can increase the size um, to uh, whatever you're interested in. All right. All right. So what we'll try to do here is we'll just try to uh, uh, buy something here at the 57s. Uh, if we get a little more of a downtick and we'll just see if we can get uh, a little scoop out of something. This is where the buyers stepped in. We got two-sided trade. Again, we're right in the middle of the market. You can see the high volume hump here. All right. Again, all our stops are typically going to be three points. All right. Again, that's a big, you know, um, that's usually a big stop for a lot of folks, but it's it's really not. All right. Now, again, I, I'm no entry yet. All right. Again, not seeing an entry yet. I don't have a limit in there. I'm just looking at the action in here right now. All right, ticks are getting a little bit negative here. As a trader, make sure you 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 feel comfortable. I mean, you you're flexible. All right, you're flexible in 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 what we do. All right, all right. Let's let's just try to buy one here at 57. I'll we'll just take a little nibble hit. See if we don't get run over. All right, so I'm long one at 57. All right, let's see if we don't get run over on this. Now, when I, when I try to build a position, okay, we try to build it, uh, you know, one contract at a time. Again, we like to build at least a two to a three contract position, but we try to do it, you know, one contract at a time. You don't have to go all in. <clears throat> All right, you can you can blend in. I I actually prefer blending into uh, positions. Okay, now what I'd like to see, since we're at least long one here, uh, I'd like to see this little green marker on the right hand side here. It says 57.75. All right, I'd like to see price come up and shift the column. Okay, I want it, I'd like to see a shift of the column, and if it doesn't. All right, that means that, that the sellers are still engaging here. All right, so I want to see a shift of the column here at the 57.75s. All right, that would make my long purchase here at 57s a little bit um, safer in a sense. All right, because the buyers then are starting to come in and strong enough to shift that column. All right, so again, we're long one here at the uh, one unit at 57s. We'll see if we can get the rotation back up. Maybe we get back up to 59s. See if we get an opportunity to do that. Uh, now, what will happen here is if this doesn't, um, again, normally I'll have a, a three-point stop, right? All right. Um, but if this doesn't, you know, hold and the sellers get a lot more aggressive here, all right, uh, I'm easily will flatten my position, okay? How many trades? Uh, it depends. Uh, it depends. We could take, um, you know, uh, again, anywhere to, you know, we've had as, as many up trade opportunities as, um, you know, uh, 10 or 15 a day. But most of the time, I'd say three to five is probably um, more reasonable and realistic. All right. Remember, we're trying to look for structural trades. All right. So now in this case where we got a little we get a little column shift. All right. Now we got to still see the buyers come in there. All right. So again, we're long here at 57. I need to see the buyers come in here. All right. More aggressively. So we get to get a column shift. This is where the buyers stepped in. All right. I don't want to see this 57 be given up too much. All right. 
Uh, the, the, the trading room is open all day. All right, we trade throughout the course of the day. It begins at um, uh, 9.15 uh, 9 or so, and we'll run till noon or so, take a little short break for lunch, come back in the afternoon. All right, let's see if we can get a little bounce on this so we can make a, uh, a few bucks off of this particular trade. All right, at this point, all right, what you can do, all right, for those of you that are a little... Um, you know skittish you can put a stop okay right underneath the market here 56 all right underneath this column all right and now we're looking for the market to move higher is it possible to use options on the structural trade yes indeed all right absolutely okay um Although I don't talk about options in, in our room, uh, we do have many members that trade options. Okay. Um, <clears throat> All right, but you can definitely use options. All right, I'm gonna put a sell limit here at 59. All right, we're going to try to try to sell it here at the 59s. Again, we're long 57s, stop at 56. And we'll just see if we can make uh, eight ticks off of this little mini trade. All right, let's see if we can get a little winner out of this for you guys. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. All right, there we go. Sold 59. All right, exit. I'm going to cancel my stop. All right, so we sold 59, we entered 57. There's two points for everybody. <clears throat> All right, now if you have multiple contracts, now guys, I only did this for one contract, uh, just for, you know, example of what we're doing. All right, because again, it's uh, talking, trading, and managing positions, as you can well imagine, it's very, very difficult. All right, it's one of the biggest challenges, you know, out there. All right, for, for somebody like myself, uh, you know, conducting a live uh, trading event. All right. Um, all right. But this is, this is the type of, of uh, you know, what you'll get kind of a, an, a glimpse into what we do on a day-to-day -day basis, okay? Um, I walk through the trade with, with most everybody in our room. Um, I'm perhaps a little bit more active here, you know, during the webinar event. Uh, but this is exactly what we do. We're looking for, we're being patient. We're trying to establish uh, a level where we're, you know, of interest. We don't want to be, we don't want to chase after a trade. All right. We want to wait for a pullback. Uh, we have certain criteria that we want to identify. All right, and again, you'll learn all that criteria. This is not something that is mysterious. All right, uh, all this stuff that we we do, we make sure that uh, you know you learn the ins and outs of um, of these trades, all right, and these trade opportunities, uh, just as I have. Okay, and 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 as I've you know I've uh, outlined them. What I'm doing here for everybody is verbalizing. All right. Um, the step-by-step -step process that we go through, all right, to evaluate a trade, identify a key zone of uh, support or resistance, or uh, you know, buy entry, sell entry, and then at that point, once we reach that zone, you know, we, we use our tools. I I know we're in you know the discount territory, okay, on our oscillator, so I know that's the buy zone, all right. I've identified. Uh, the structure to look to to take a buy all right take a long once price reaches the level that we w are interested in as we have I don't just immediately buy it as you can see here what we did is is I didn't have I didn't leave a, a limit order in there so they could slam me you know there are times where all right you know uh, you you have a limit order in, and all of a sudden they come down to your level and bam they slam you down another you know two or three points right there's no re reason to to have that happen to you okay um and, and most of the time when that occurs 
is because you've left the limit order in there and you know you've gotten hurt what i've done here is i wanted to buy 58 we ended up buying 57 the low tick here is 56 quarter all right so i mean we got this within a matter of um you know four or five or six ticks on our entry and we were a patient we used the evidence of order flow, <clears throat> order flow excuse me order flow coming in to then take that trade put a tight stop maximum stop here by the way all right after entry was four ticks now i know i mentioned 12 ticks as maximum risk but our true risk was only four ticks on this all right now again i don't recommend four ticks at every single entry point all right let the market dictate you know uh, what it's going to, going to do all right but we were able to get a very favorable uh, entry uh, again as i mentioned earlier we look for uh, a couple points at a clip all right if the market like yesterday is more trending okay then we want to try to you know go more for more than two points but when we're in a range type condition as we we're currently are in and again that's part of identifying what type of trade um, are we looking at okay um, then we have to adjust our trade technique to whether it's uh, trend trading or range trading okay today is more range trade type action so again we want to buy that pullback and then we you know look for a two point all right now this was only on one contract here very very simple again i know a lot of you are, are single contract traders and you know the question has always been posed to me can you trade a single contract all right and and yes the the, the point is you can all right um it takes a little different um you know kind of uh, uh technique but you can all trade a single contract right um we all <clears throat> most of us we we want to trade you know two contracts or more simply because when the market you know has a runner and the market is moving you want to have that runner on board all right but when you're range trading like this there's nothing wrong with you know uh selecting your level as we did very judiciously enter it and then look to take two points out of it. If if you were to trade, you know, one contract three or four times a day, and not to say that everybody everybody every trade would be a winner, but if you can, you know, um, get a couple trades out of it, that, you know, by the end of three or four trades, and then on a range type day such as we have today, uh, it's a little easier. You'll be able to take a lot more trades. And again, not trying to, tr you know, trade 15 or 20 trades a day, scalping all day long. That's not what we uh, are trying to do here, all right? But we're trying to, you know, get a structural location so that the market can support a move two points or three points or greater, all right? That's what we're always trying to do. Um, I only scalped this, enabled me to stay longer. Very interested in the 14 day chart. Yeah. Again, you know, for those of you that are interested, our, our trial period a after the webinar, you know, will begin tomorrow, will be uh, 14 days. Normally, it's seven days, so we extend that for our uh, um, Infinity uh, webinar folks. So that's not a problem there. Um, yeah, this was a nice, easy trade. I mean, when I say easy, meaning it was uh, low stress. Okay, uh, I'm not. I won't say in any way that trading is easy, but uh, it's not as hard as you think or perhaps that you've experienced uh, it's a matter of following certain uh, details and discipline and, and that's where uh, many people uh, fall down on one you may not have a method and you're searching for one two if you have a method you got to make sure that you are following it. If, it if it is a viable method that has a good track record historical track record then you know um, you have to follow it win or lose all right so it's important uh that you're able to uh um you know to follow a discipline all right now this could have easily all right turned into a loser had the market uh pulled back deeper okay uh we were fortunate we got a winner now it's not really a flip of a coin 
but the market can do and certainly will do anything it wants to do <laughs> at any time and we all know that all right all right and what we need to do is uh, since we cannot control what the market's going to do right everybody agree with that since we not going to control that we can control what we are going to do individually how we're going to search for our trades how we're going to enter them where we're going to put our stops right and we try to do that as effectively you know as possible okay uh even have even having done all that uh any potential trade that looks good can turn into a loss all right so you have to realize that this is not a game about you know we're just going to give you all winners we're going to teach you how to evaluate the market how to evaluate what's going on how to read the order flow all right number bars here all right uh what evidence do we need uh, to see the criteria to take a trade and then once we've done all that all right you know we place our stop and then the market has to you know do its job i've done my job you've done your job all right what you don't want to be doing is chasing after a move because you're frustrated that oh i didn't buy the 57s and i'm going to go buy 59s because i'm frustrated and, and i should have bought the 57s if you didn't buy the 57s don't go chase and buy the 59s very simple but it's again it seems simple and it is in many ways all right so what we're going to try to do for our members and we do daily is teach them how to stay calm all right evaluate the market in a in a calm state of mind all right and then by doing so you can you can rationalize and be much more logical in your approach where everybody else out there is is a, you know the old proverbial chicken with their head cut off all right type trade here we're able to you know stay calm under you know pressure and guys we're all under pressure everybody you know we want to take you know we want to put on good trades uh, we want to have winners but really the only way that you're going to be able to do that is um is being in a calm state of mind and we're going to help you guys do that all right we have a good solid methodology and we're going to help you execute a methodology now again we took our profits up here at 59s i didn't enter a short trade i didn't reverse okay because that you know again we we look at one side of the market first all right take our trade and then we reevaluate i'm not in you know uh stop and reverse type trader and i know many people uh, i know of many people that are that as soon as they exit a trade they reverse and go short uh, we don't do that here we evaluate one trade opportunity you know at a time okay uh did a trial once before uh not able to reach for you uh hope to join it okay thank you very much ed appreciate that yeah i do remember when you were in all right you know and again come back when you're able to <clears throat> All right. But I hope, uh, you know, again, you know, we have a lot of guests uh, that do come through and, um, you know, though not everybody joins our membership and may not meet their, you know, uh, criteria of what they're looking for individually. But one thing I do hope that when members do, you know, guest members come through our, our, um, our trial period is that they leave, if they don't end up joining, that they leave with a little tidbit of knowledge that they didn't have uh, before. And they get at least a glimpse into, um, you know, what uh, professionals do. And, and again, all you need to do at this point, you know, once you have a methodology down and you're trading one contract, two contract, uh, in order to, you know, you, you know we, we eventually learn, teach you how to learn to size up. Okay, so if you're one and two contract traders, all right, um, you know you have to learn how to successfully trade one contract just like I did here all right and then two contracts all right and then at that point you know once you have a historical personal historical track record of of success you know then you can start sizing up the last thing you want to do 
you know, depending upon your level of experience. But if you're somebody with not a, a great level of experience or have been struggling, the last thing you want to do is use the leverage that, you know, uh, the brokers give you to, you know, enter a trade, uh, you know, 10 contracts, boom. You know, I mean, the last thing you want to do, because that's going to just create a level of trauma, all right, uh, you know, internally. Learn to trade one nice and calm, just as I did here. Then you learn to trade two, again, nice and calm. Then with two contracts, you learn to scale out and then to, you know, manage your risk and, and adjust, um, you know, adjust your risk profile accordingly. And then you stay with two for a period of time. And then eventually after you've had a good success, uh, you know, period with trading two, then, you know, as you build your account up, your account value, okay? Um, so you do it one at a time. And, uh, you know, and again, the, the last thing I want to do, you know, is create a level of trauma, all right, you know, with people. And, uh, again, I think our, the way uh, we do everything here is to help everybody uh, avoid that those traumatic you know traumatic events uh, that occur you know, with all traders and most of the time you know those traumatic events are self-inflicted as we know so that's again this is all part of you know i'll give you methodology we have a solid methodology and an approach uh, we go beyond that all right we we, we help you manage uh, not only the methodology but you know uh, internally we help you manage you know th hopefully through example here uh, myself and and again you know I manage myself as well and we all you know uh, you know work to become successful you know day to day and it's again one of my missions is to help you guys become a better decision maker so this is the idea and again becoming a better decision maker does not mean that you're gonna be a winning trade every time all right, and when you know you could do everything absolutely correct and still have a losing trade at the end of that when you go through the uh, debriefing personal debriefing you ask yourself did I take a good quality trade based upon good trade principles and did I follow the criteria that the method you know outlines and if at the end of that question is yes even though you had a losing trade or you got stopped out, okay, uh, you did everything correct. I would grade myself, you know, a positive, a plus based upon that. I don't grade myself because I got stopped out on something. Now, on the other hand, if you're certainly not following any good trade principles or you're not following any methodology and you're getting stopped out left and right, well, you're going to grade yourself accordingly, aren't you? All right, so it's important that you understand that, um, you know, trading is, is, is not about being right all the time, all right, but rather having a strong methodology that you're able to, um, you know, become better decision makers, all right. And that's through anything in life, but in, unfortunately in trading, uh, everything comes to the surface immediately where, you know, throughout daily life, you know, in other professions, uh, we can all kind of sweep it under the rug, right? You know, sweep our, um, you know, our shortcomings under the rug. Well, when you're trading, you can't, sh you can't sweep any shortcomings under the rug, all right? They come right to the surface and they stare you in the face. So we're going to try to help teach you how to handle that, all right? And that's, that's a big part of what we do and part of what I'm doing going forward, not just give you methodology, and technology but give you you know some insights into the psychology of professional traders and how to deal with it all right so that i think that's a benefit that's embedded that i don't necessarily highlight though it is within the context of the decision making process is your moving average proprietary uh, i'm sorry if i missed your question uh, the moving averages here, we have a, uh, a shadow that we refer to as the fair value zone. And um, it, it's not really, you know, anything super proprietary. Uh, we use an 89 and 34 uh, exponential uh, moving average. Okay. Uh, that's the bat phone. All right. Um, 
So it's an 89.34 moving average shadow. We refer to that as our fair value zone. All right. So again, it's uh, proprietary to us, but it is not anything that um, you know you couldn't put together yourself. All right. But again, you keep something in mind about uh, indicators, whether it's a you know a MACD, a CCI, an RSI, moving averages, etc. Um, the proprietary nature of indicators is how they're used, not how they're built. And, you know, I use a derivative of a CCI, Commodity Channel Index, um, but I've created it to my own uh, specifications. All right, it is not a canned CCI. I did just pull it off the machine and I used the settings. I created my own, all right, based upon a level of experience, you know, over the years. And so uh, the CCI is not my proprietary, but how I use it and the settings I use it is proprietary. So I think any approach, it's not the mathematics of the tool, but how you use the tool that becomes proprietary. I mean, you can use a lot of canned indicators out there uh, very well, and they work very, very well. All right. But how you use it is the proprietary nature of it. All right. So it's, it's, it's you know... Um, you know, there, there are many traders out there that don't use a lot of indicators. And, and technically, as you take a look here, guys, right, how many indicators do we really have? Right? I have, you know, I don't have that many. I have one oscillator. Okay? And then I think everybody, you know, oscillators are, are, are good. All right? They, they give you readings. Um, but that's it. Everything else here is price-based. All right? Yes, I have a, you know, uh, 3489 uh, moving average here, but that's for reference and how we use our moving average and, and is um, I think it's unique all right in, in terms of how we you know view it all right but everything else is price based um, everything here that you see uh, ATR lines all right which we call our structure lines that's all price based average to range we do a lot with volatility um, we consider, you know, I consider this part of this method, a big part of this method is a volatility trading method. All right. Uh, we want to maintain, uh, you know, we want to know what the volatility levels are and we use those to our advantage. All right. Where, where people are selling out at levels or buying, you know, covering short positions at levels that are structure points, all right, based upon an average true range. Uh, those offer us opportunities to get in, again, with relatively, um, you know, good reward risk ratios. Um, my years over at the investment banks as a market maker, uh, just to, uh, you know, add an addendum in here that much of what I've done as a market maker and what I've learned as a market maker uh, is implemented here in the methodology. So a lot of people have always said, you know, I want to trade how the market makers do. I want to trade how the, you know, the big investment bank traders do. All right, much of what I've incorporated in our method here uh, comes from direct experience, all right, uh, when I was a market maker and the concepts and the techniques uh, that we use, you know, modified to some degree uh, because we are not market makers, but modified enough where effective um, you know action all right is uh, is used within these techniques so again this is probably going to become as close as you'll get to um, uh, being you know uh, on the same level as as professional market makers and there's a lot of very good traders out there very very good educators uh, this is my, you know, uh, derivative of, of what I, how I trade or how I've learned to trade and how I've developed uh, from a market maker skill-based trading to an independent trader, all right, employing uh, a level of skills and, and techniques that I've learned as a market maker, but I don't trade like I did as a market maker. I don't have to buy them. I don't have to sell them. As a market maker, we were making, uh, you know, liquid markets, all right, and, you know, both sides of the trade. And so as a result, uh, I was always buying on the way down and always selling on the way up, all right? Today, we don't, I don't need to do that. I can then begin to choose my spots, okay?
so it was a lot of, a lot of weight. Uh, do you trade ES and, and CL pretty much evenly every day? Um, you know, yeah, uh, we trade the, the three contracts that we trade primarily. What we all focus on is, of course, S&P, uh, crude oil, and um, NASDAQ. All right, let me just show you NASDAQ over here. All right, uh, for those, we have a, a number of our folks uh, in our trading room that trade NASDAQ. So we'll, uh, they'll, they'll focus on the NASDAQ, and they'll, uh, in our trading room, uh, they will give us um, notification of you know, what they're doing and what they're seeing. And so our community is, is such that, you know, it, it's a share, it's a share type community. All right. We, we, you know, we exchange, exchange information. I'm not, I may not personally be looking at NASDAQ every moment of the day. Again, as I mentioned at the outset, it is very challenging to trade, you know, uh, multiple instruments simultaneously, but with, uh, with our group, with a number of folks, you know, focusing on NASDAQ and they highlight, um, uh, they highlight, you know, what's going on. All right. Uh, one tool that we do use, I didn't introduce it here, but let me bring it into view. Uh, this is a proprietary, uh, what we call uh, the Scanalyzer dashboard. And, and this is very useful if you're trading multiple uh, instruments. What this does is it's um, this I designed this last year with my programmer and this identifies. So right now I'm looking at the three primary contracts that we trade. But if you were somebody that wanted to monitor multiple contracts, you know, multiple instruments, uh, there's uh, uh, effectively an unlimited you know number that you can put on here. But for now we're just looking at crude oil, S and P, and Nasdaq. And what this shows is some general fields of last and net change uh, what the current trend condition is for that particular bar type so for instance over here you see crude oil 250 tick 750 tick uh, S&P 750 tick 1500 tick all right what it does is it shows what's the current trend condition for that particular bar type okay now when, when we talk about trend uh, trends can be multiple trends on various chart sizes, all right? Long-term, short-term, micro-trend, etc. This will identify what the current trend is on the specific bar type that we're we're looking at, all right? Uh, the ATR stop again, which is our structure lines, as I've mentioned, I will give the current value of that. That's important for us to know. And then the trade categories that we have, we're outlined as uh, stackers, premium and discounts, so and then extremes. So there's three core categories. Uh, the bull and the bear stacker, this is the beginning. Uh, these identify the beginning of trending conditions. Uh, upside, bullish, or to the downside, bearish. It will also indicate when the trend is uh, reaching some, you know, in the process of shifting from a bullish to a bearish transitional period it'll highlight that uh, the algorithm built into that is all about that and then the premium and discounts which uh, you'll see here on our on our uh, chart here okay you'll see these little arrows all right and and you'll see a little text beside it it says PREM this is what's referred to as a premium okay all uh, identified on our charts live there's no backfill it's all live all right, it's about as live as you can possibly get. You'll see here in the top left hand, uh, you'll see premium and bear stacker. All right, so this becomes a signal for uh, our members that are utilizing the method to, um, you know, pay closer attention to the opportunity for possibly a short uh, at this uh, price zone. And then there'll be criteria to enter the trade that, that, that they all learn. All right. And then, so that's the uh, bull and bear stacker, premium and discounts. And then the premium and discounts are categorized uh, as a turbo premium, turbo discount, or standard premium, standard discount. And then at the end uh, of the spreadsheet here, it says extremes, right? Now, uh, extremes are categorized very simply as, if you take a look at the oscillator down here, you'll see 200 extreme to the upside, 200 extreme to the downside, and you'll see um, when you get a star, 
okay that indicates that price has reached a 200 extreme level it'll be highlighted on uh, the spreadsheet here this little scandalizer box uh, and there'll be a ver uh, if you want to turn on an audio alert okay um, you're able to do that as well and then what happens is when you reach extremes such as this a lot of times you'll get you know a reversal type you know bounce or pullback all right and then as you can see here and I know a lot of folks like trading divergences all right, you'll see a divergence here into the low of this NASDAQ and then that offered um, although it, the second time down here it did not reach a 200 extreme price actually notched the lower low creating this uh, oscillated divergence and again those that like looking uh, for divergences and we do as well right, we will um, identify a potential divergence and uh, and that becomes a trade opportunity for either covering uh, an existing open position or perhaps you know being a little bit more aggressive and in, in initiating a new position uh, on a divergent type signal all right so this is all built into the software now this is this particular scanalyzer dashboard is uh, proprietary to us all right uh, but it is um, integrated uh, into the Sierra chart platform all right as well all right uh, there are other aspects of the software that we again that we use um, but for the most part uh, you know this is um, the way we've created this simply is to uh, complement what I teach the method and so forth okay uh, the software that I've created here was not created to sell software but rather created to complement uh, how we teach how we look for trade opportunities and a lot of this uh, I've taken a number of suggestions from our membership of what they would like to see uh, implemented that would potentially help us you know um, make better decisions all right and again I think there's a high correlation in in uh, good decision making to profitability all right if you become if you focus on you know the the aspect of making good decisions rather than coming in every day and saying you know I have to make X number of dollars every day um, if you focus on more the decision process and you become immersed in the process of trading rather than the outcomes of trading I think that you will, um, you know, everybody will will benefit uh, much greatly, you know, much more greatly than than they perhaps currently are, are doing so. All right, so we're able to um, help you guys along along those lines. All right, uh, not much in the way of, of further trade opportunity right here as we're as we're you know kind of slugging it out. We're right here in the middle. Uh, the, again, this is more of a range type condition, so uh, we don't really have um, uh, a lot of opportunities but let's take a, just a quick look here uh, as I was uh, talking there you can see how price rotated down here to the 54 level on price okay the oscillator our CCI got into the discount territory okay so at this point now again a little bit in hindsight here but this would be a situation where uh, we would l look to try to buy on this dip okay and, and then look for rotation back up because of the day type that we're uh, that we're looking at all right uh, let's take a look at some of the questions you folks have as a guest buyer infinity today uh, I will automatically be enrolled in the 14-day trial and receive daily email uh, do I need to sign up somewhere yes okay so uh, let's just get to that for a moment all right uh, that question so yes if you uh, let's take a look here go to the website and I'll just bring that website in all right uh, if you go to the website here you'll be able to um, on the right hand column Polaris trading group dot com uh, guess what I'm having having problems with that particular 
Give me one second. Didn't load up properly. Okay. All right. So if you go to the website PolarisTradingGroup.com, sign up for the free trial here in the uh, in the top right hand corner. Uh, you'll see that it'll it'll say a seven day trial. Uh, your anybody here that's attending the webinar will automatically uh, be extended to 14 days. Okay. So no problem there, and you'll be an automatically extended. All right, so just simply go there, and then uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, what we'll do is we'll put you on the list to receive the daily trade strategy, okay, that we that all our members and subscribers receive uh, as well. You'll receive this in the morning, uh, no later than 9 a.m. Eastern Time. Usually it's much, much earlier. Um, but again, this gives us our morning plan for the day, and, and then... Uh, beginning at the 9:15 briefing, uh, we look at, um, we review uh, what we wrote, and then we kind of hone it, we kind of fine tune it to what is uh, being outlined uh, in, you know, for the morning cash uh, opening trade. All right, so everybody will see, receive a copy of that uh, that has uh, signed up for a free trial. So just uh, go in there. Uh, feel free to explore the website, folks, for the, if you have never before. Uh, there's a number of free videos. Um, you can go to the indicator page. There's on, e on every one of our indicators here, uh, there is a descriptive video along with that. So feel free. Uh, if you go to the video section, uh, there's a lot of real good uh, free videos uh, available for everybody. And um, uh, we did one just recently. Uh, it's called Techniques and Probability Thinking. <clears throat> and we did a great webinar there. Uh, and it kind of takes you through the process of what I do on a day-to-day -day basis, discussing this with our members uh, using that ODA loop, Observation, Orientation, Decision, Action. So we did an entire webinar on that. And there's a lot of very good webinars, some prior other um, webinars that we've done, we've done with Infinity and, and a few other folks. So feel free to, uh, uh, to explore you know, everything on there. All right. And uh, so right now, this is what we have here. Uh, hopefully we can get another trade or two here before the uh, uh, noontime break. And uh, let me know if you guys have any questions. Additionally, I'll try to field some more questions from you guys. I, I might have missed a few. If I've missed any questions, if you guys want to just retype in your questions, um, I'll be happy to um, uh, answer some more questions here. Let's see. Uh, Oh, what is the indicator that makes the color bar? Okay, so um, a lot of people have problems with, you know, changing of colors and so forth, okay? Um, we use, now there's a lot of different colors on this chart, okay? And um, I'm a big fan of trying to, you know, make everything as useful as I can. Uh, colors are just there for contrast. So what the indicator here is, it's um, on the color bar itself is a 1334 uh, EMA change. Okay, so a 1334 EMA change. Uh, some folks don't like colors on their bars at all, and they like to keep them gray because for some reason uh, it um, it influences their decision. In other words they look at a red bar and they say I can't buy a red bar alright uh, yes you can alright so you know again it's it's designed to show a condition in price and once you understand that condition uh, it shouldn't be a problem buying a red bar I'll sell a blue bar as well I'll short a blue bar it doesn't really matter but if, he, if you're somebody who has difficulty with that uh, change the bars to gray you know, just just make it gray. You know, just make it a neutral color. All right. So that's the idea. But again, there's a lot of colors on here. There's no question about it. But uh, they're they're primarily for contrast. All right. So we can see things. All right. Am I selling? Am I interested in? Yeah. So um, we're interested in selling up here around the 60s. We were talking about 60s earlier. And again, uh, what we need to see though, all right, is we need to see. A significant amount of selling starting to come in, all right, that uh, will stop uh, this up, this current upward move, 
all right so we're still in this range uh, right at the moment so this would be an area where we would consider uh, taking a short it's the opening but now one thing to keep in mind is, is we're thinking about this should the market not give us a good signal to the sell side uh, you know with with some good like what we saw before we saw good buying a level of buying where we entered if the market is not giving us good selling you know uh, complement of selling and, and the buyers are you know whatever the buyers we have up here are, are absorbing that selling uh, they could easily take out this opening area because what do the bulls want to do right at the moment right you know they want to hold this opening they want to convert this opening from current resistance right now to a support point all right so what they what they need to do in order to in order to accomplish that all right they need to absorb whatever sellers that are <clears throat> currently uh, coming out and then push price above get get shorts you know to scramble all right push prices higher and then continue to hold uh, the 59s which will be conversion from uh, potential uh, resistance to to support now that's what the bulls want to do uh, we all know then conversely what the bears want to do right they want to hold it below the opening and try to force uh, additional sellers try to force more selling right now the the, the uh, bulls excuse me the bears have not been able to uh, push it below uh, the level of support that um, that we had outlined in our daily trade strategy so let's take a quick look at that daily trade strategy again for a moment so you guys see um, <clears throat> what we're looking at so on the daily trade strategy the segments you'll have a scenario one and a scenario two the scenario one is a bullish scenario and scenario two of course then would be a bearish scenario so the idea here is in, in, in the way the uh, current action is out playing it's playing scenario two so failure to convert the 2066 to support with a violation and conversion of 2058 so if you take a look here <clears throat> uh, early this morning did not uh, clear 66's and on the opening here I had 59 60's and then they broke 58's so a conversion of 58's to resistance all right so right now we can simply say that you know within that context of that 58 um, there's some resistance there and that's has uh, is what's happened opens the door to sellers to push back the buyers from yesterday levels of interest lower levels of interest for renewed buy response are 58 54 52 all right so that's what we wrote um, this morning early so as you see what's happened here in the context of uh, price okay now again uh, we don't do any guessing this is not a guessing game all right and what we try to do is identify levels of you know what happened yesterday uh, what may happen today what's the potential for happening to, uh, today and whatever does occur a bullish scenario or a bearish scenario all right um, I'll consider both the bullish and the bearish so if the bullish is going to unfold right scenario one would unfold then what would be the projections for upside potential for a bullish scenario what would be the bearish projections for a downside scenario two all right and we put that in context so that's what I write about every day and, I, and again the, 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 the rationale of the daily trade strategy is preparation not prediction all right so we want to make sure our traders are prepared and understand what key levels you know uh, are important and so as I wrote this morning we're looking for the you know 52s to the 54s and look at the low of the day so far 52 quarter now again I'm you know I don't take credit that I knew that the 52 quarter or the 52s was going to be the low of the day so far all right but we do make um, you know some inferences that should the market pull back what is kind of like the distance that the market could potentially you know pull back to before uh, buyers stepping back in a little bit more assertively 
all right, to to find that level of uh, support. Okay, and we, you know, again, there's a there's a mathematical projection, and I use profile. I do kind of use a confluence of, of factors, and we come up with uh, you know various zones. Now, uh, once price reach that zone, as we saw this morning, this is where we start saying, all right, this is where we're the inference is that buyers will step back in. I don't know that for a fact. It's an inference. It's an assumption. All right. As a professional trader, you're making assumptions you know, throughout the course of, of the trading day. You're making inferences based upon what has occurred, and then you're making some you know, educated, some people like to call them educated guesses. All right. But again, it's an inference. So I infer that the, the buyers are expected to come in, you know, from the 52 to 54 zone. Well, I don't know that for a fact, but if it does occur now, as it's as the trade is unfolding, the auction is unfolding at that level. All right now, I get to look and evaluate real time through the order flow, through the markets, you know, um, market internals. Again, we're looking at ticks, advanced decline lines, up-down ratios, etc. is through the market internals. And we're making some inferences about, um, you know, how, the, how that daily trade strategy scenario is, is playing out. Okay. And is there then an opportunity, a trade opportunity to, you know, establish uh, a position based upon what we're observing in the marketplace live. So we make some assumptions. Again, it's a, you know, the daily trade strategy is simply a static uh, trade plan for the day. All right, the market's very dynamic as we know, so we need to uh, evaluate the, the dynamic action of price relative to what we wrote statically. All right, and then we come up with, um, you know, our intraday game plan. You know, think about a football team right where they have a game plan for the for you know the Sunday game they've spent all week practicing and then their best laid game plan you know falls apart okay so as a result they have to make some adjustments so that's what we're constantly doing you know throughout the day is making adjustments all right all right so um so that's it for for me, folks. Here, I think we'll uh, we'll start wrapping up. I think you had a you know a, a decent idea of what we look for, and and how the uh, the trading room unfolds on a day to day basis. All right. So uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this. Uh, again, uh, go right ahead and uh, sign up for a free trial. All right. Come in and, and take a two week uh, visit with us. All right, I think uh, it'll be worth your while. You'll, you'll start learning more about what we do. And then, you know, at some point, if you decide you want to uh, learn in much more uh, greater detail, you can. All right, so on the website here, uh, right-hand column, free trial. Again, you'll see that it's seven days. We, we're automatically extending that to, uh, seven, uh, to 14 days. All right, so I will uh, pass that, uh, the baton over to Patrick. And I want to thank Patrick and the folks over at Infinity for the opportunity to... Uh, uh, present this live for you guys. At least we got one decent trade in here, um, and, and you get a glimpse into you know how we view and analyze you know live throughout the day. And again, we do this throughout the entire day. So, all right. Thanks very much for you guys for your attendance, and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. And Patrick, I'll uh, pass the baton back over to you.
Nick is sitting with me a little simulator for those of you who uh, don't play with us or maybe not getting involved. Uh, we have a really nice simulation in which we are at uh, uh, the options are at four and three. So this is a little bit of uh, sitting with us to see if we can get through nicely and not get overwhelmed. All right. Uh, just yeah, there's a there's a link I posted there earlier, uh, Pablo. If you just want to paste it into your browser, it's a work nine. There it is. Okay. Um, all right, folks. Appreciate it. I'm going to read some list stuff. See you next time. Thanks so much. Have a great day. All right, folks. We're getting future adoption done. Future is the detail office change of one kind of the transactions and all concerns related to blocks and time to change for all investors. First, we'll consider whether trading is suitable for you and whether sufficient financial knowledge and financial resources can make our more efficient investment. Opinions, market data, and recommendations are subject to change at any time. Please ask the folks at the front if you have any questions. All right, folks. Have a great day. Thank you. All right, guys. So we're just going to wrap up the uh, uh, webinar here. And for those of you that uh, attended, if you want additional information, and you can reach us at the uh, website www.flyerstradinggroup.com david at flyerstradinggroup.com uh, and if you want to contact uh, Patrick Giovari and some of our representatives for additional information so thanks very much alright guys so we're just going to wrap this up for today's webinar and again we uh, thank everybody for attending this webinar uh, live presentation this is something very different than we normally do and hopefully you got something out of it and uh, so for those of you that um, I want to contact us. Uh, you can contact us here at David at Players Trading Group dot com or uh, Players Trading Group dot com for a free trial and uh, or contact Patrick or your Infinity representative. So thanks very much. And we will end our presentation here and we'll have this uploaded uh, to our website in a day or so. Thanks very much. And we'll see everybody uh, at the next one. Good trading to everybody. Thanks.